Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about overtraining recovery. So if you're suffering from overtraining syndrome um, and what you can kind of do to recover from that. So I made a previous video, I've done a few similar ones in the past. So one of them was symptoms of over, uh, overtraining. The other was the, you know, the kind of hormonal impacts of overtraining, how it impacts cortisol, thyroid levels, uh, testosterone being the main three in particular. But then we've also got things like prolactin growth hormone and other kind of stuff. Um, but essentially this video is going to be a more practical thing that you or approaches that you can take to, I guess, take like, you know, start the process towards recovery from overtraining. So first of all, what are some of the symptoms of overtraining? lack of drive, lack of energy, poor training and racing performance, and inability to do things that you were previously able to. So if you were able to train uh, 15 hours one week, and now you can only train 10 hours or five hours, well, you've, you know, you've had a reduction in your capacity or your threshold or your tolerance, I should say, for enduring training stress. So it's really important to really be in tune with your body sometimes when you're going through training, are you starting to slip down a slope of increasing fatigue, decreasing performance, decreasing tolerance to, to the training? And then generally through other things in your life, you're getting cranky, grumpy, more snappy at things that otherwise usually didn't get on your nerves. Um, you know, is your libido and sex drive dropping? Because that's a big thing with testosterone and cortisol and uh, overstressing the body. So there's a lot of things, weight gain, etc., with the thyroid. So Overtraining recovery, the first thing you need to do is, uh, and you don't need to do this, but the first thing I would say is to get full panel of blood tests because it's one thing to be subjectively uh, of the kind of understanding that you've been overtrained and that's where you are. It's another thing to know exactly what's going wrong on an objective level or at an objective level. So, you know, you may think, okay, well, I'm overtrained, therefore I probably like screwed up my hormones, et cetera, I'm just going to recover. But you could have a raging vitamin D deficiency because it's the middle of winter and that could very easily be fixed with vitamin D supplementation, for example. And it may not be that you need to kind of completely ride off the next three, four months and try and just recover from what you've done. So blood tests, get all your hormones in, in terms of the main ones. So testosterone, thyroid function, uh, including TSH and also T4 and free T3. So very important to get a full picture, not just your TSH levels. Um, get your cortisol, morning AM cortisol. If that's elevated, that's not a good sign. Well, it's a, it's an indication of overtraining. Get your vitamin D levels as well. Vitamin D is an important hormone in the body, even though it's uh, cold or classed as a vitamin generally. It is a um, steroidal hormone. Um, get your, you can get prolactin, all that, all that kind of stuff as well. You also want to look at things that are causes of fatigue. So for example, iron, particularly ferritin levels, you want to also get a full blood count, make sure you're not sick or immunocompromised. So get all your white blood cells. And then with a full blood count, look at your hemoglobin and hematocrit. Have they dropped significantly? That can be a sign of overtraining under recovery. So there's many things um, and many different blood tests that are uh, this is not a comprehensive list. There's many others that are very important to get. So get comprehensive blood testing to really get a full picture of what's going on under the hood. You can have your subjective experience and then there's actual objective data that you can measure. Blood tests are great for that. The next thing is obviously do the opposite of what caused the overtraining in the first place. This is pretty obvious. So if you're overtraining you've, you've, or if you've crashed your hormones and you're all screwed up and you're feeling like crap because of it, it was because you trained too much and you, you recovered too little. So Start by training less, in particular, less intensity, because intensity is going to be more of a stress than just uh, low state or steady state um, aerobic work. So reduce the intensity, reduce the volume, and focus more on recovery. So now into the guts of what you can really do. So that third point there, sleep. Obviously, sleep is where we get all the benefits of rejuvenation, of, re of recovery, of repair, uh, it's where all our, um, you know, basically it's the only time of the day when we're sleeping is when we have the anabolic processes predominating. So during the day, it's all catabolic. It's breaking down. We've got, you know, we're, we're using up resources during the day. We're building them back up during the night. So 
think about it in terms of optimizing sleep. Uh, and, and by that, I mean, in increasing the amount of sleep you get, but also the quality. Because when you get good sleep quality, you're going to improve your hormone profile, you're going to reduce cortisol, you're going to increase testosterone, thyroid function, etc. So increasing sleep quality, focus on eliminating stimulants later in the day. Um, that's going to affect your sleep. Even if you don't feel like it's effect affecting your sleep, there will be to some extent um, an effect on sleep. And so be very careful with stimulant intake, particularly after midday or getting later into the day. Also, um, a regular, you know, have it getting into a regular sleep pattern. So it's going to be very difficult, not always um, an option for people like that do night shifts or whatnot, but optimizing sleep quality. I've done a full video again. You can guys go and just search sleep enhanced med AU. Um, on how to optimize sleep. Very, very important. One of the most important things you can do in order to repair and recover from overtraining. Number four is nutrition. Now, one of the main hormonal impacts we kind of see with overtraining is this chronically elevated cortisol, which then subsequently causes uh, an impairment to thyroid function and a some kind of subclinical hypothyroidism. And an impairment to testosterone production and really an impairment to the recovery hormone. So growth hormone, testosterone, uh, and then obviously thyroid is more of a metabolic hormone, but it does still have an important role in recovery because if your whole metabolism is slowed, everything else is going to be slow to take place. So get uh, your, uh, so going back to nutrition, how that all kind of relates uh, is that chronically elevated cortisol is often uh, quite common when people do like, for example, ketogenic dieting, but it's also just common with overtraining and anything that's stressful. So a very important uh, macro nutrient to focus on is carbohydrate intake. Carbohydrates are basically, carbohydrate and protein uh, are gonna be one and two, and then fat intake is probably gonna be three, but Ensuring you're getting enough carbohydrates during training, of course, very important, but, but even during recovery and when you're trying to over, uh, recover from overtraining uh, and repair the body, carbohydrates have a suppressive effect on cortisol and, you know, long-term high cortisol is going to inhibit the immune system. It's really going to cause a lot of damage to the body. So ensuring you're getting enough carbohydrates and then alongside that, ensuring you're getting enough total calories in general so that you're not in a state in which the body's breaking down. You you want to be repairing. You got to give the body enough overall calories in order to be able to really commence those those functions or, or that process of recovery. So overall calories very important and carbohydrate intake never neglect it because that's going to directly improve hormonal health more so than fat and protein. You know, there's the argument that well Testosterone is derived from cortisol, I mean, from uh, cholesterol, therefore increase uh, fat intake. <laughs> yes and no. Testosterone also needs a low cortisol environment in order to have all the, the proper signaling uh, cascade taking place. So focus on carbohydrates and calories. Uh, that's not an excuse to go and eat a, a million calories a day. Just ensure that you know what you need uh, in general and you're kind of reaching those goals. Also with nutrition, and this is where blood tests are important as well, but think about correcting micronutrient deficiencies if you have any. So uh, we've talked about vitamin D, but there's also other important things like zinc, there's magnesium, uh, there's iron, of course, all the vitamins and minerals, very important and really focus on good quality nutrient dense foods, which are also going to provide you that overall calorie need uh, and carbohydrate need uh, to really optimize your hormonal function and recovery from overtraining. Number five is supplements. Now, whether or not you need supplements is you, you probably don't need them, uh, but I think that supplements can, in some instances, when applied uh, for a particular purpose with indication, can accelerate some of these processes. So if nutrition alone can't improve a, for example, uh, iron deficiency, then of course, supplementation can help. Uh, if it can't improve a, a zinc deficiency, which is very hard to kind of establish on a blood test anyway, supplements can help. 
So in terms of the, the supplements, which can be very beneficial, you should never supplement iron if you don't need it. Never supplement anything really if you don't need it. But the supplements that can really help generally are going to be zinc and magnesium for improving sleep quality and muscle recovery. Also going to, those ones are also going to reduce cortisol as well. Uh, vitamin Z can have a very suppressive effect on cortisol, which can be important and is good for the immune system. But I would say if you have a, a good quality diet, it's kind of arguable, but definitely zinc and magnesium before bed. Um, and then if you're really overtrained, you can look into some of the more adaptogenic uh, herbs, which are your ginseng, ro rhodiola, uh, maca, all of these ones, which have effects in the brain, which increase uh, that kind of cognitive reserve and brain capacity, brain energy. So there is dopamine, dopaminergic effects, but there's also effects on suppressing cortisol. Ashwagandha is another one. With all of these, different people will react differently. So you've got to, you know, speak to a physician, find out what works best for you in terms of supplements. There are many that can help with overtraining, but always be careful and always implement one at a time. See how you respond. Give it time. Don't take a whole bunch at once. Then you go, oh, now I feel like crap. That they're all a load of bullshit, you know. So um, supplements are a, a definite, or definitely can accelerate the process of recovery from overtraining, but you've just got to be smart with how you approach it. And then number six is to, you know, once you get to a stage where you're feeling like you want to start training properly again, monitor heart rate and just ensure that you very much ease back into your training gen uh, gradually and gently. So you want to ensure that when you're getting back into training that you're not doing too much intensity because that's the fastest way to overtrain because you're elevating cortisol, suppressing testosterone thyroid again, like we said. So monitor heart rate, I'd say around 70% of your max heart rate. So if your max heart rate's 200 beats a minute, then keep your heart rate during training under 140 beats a minute and be really religious with that and be strict, strict on yourself during, you, you know, whilst monitoring that. So really kind of hammer in the fact that, well, this is my absolute threshold or this is my um, peak. I can't go beyond it. That's the limit. And if you're running and the heart rate goes above 70%, at least for, you know, do this for maybe a few weeks and then a month or whatever, just start walking. You know, there's no harm in being strict with this because the last thing you want to be doing is spiking the heart rate, getting into an overtraining state, and then you're back where you started. So if you're riding, going up a hill, just slow down, you know, put it, put it down a gear, slow down, keep the heart rate and be really strict about building up uh, the aerobic system first and then building that aerobic system up strongly before you then go and focus on the intense training down the track when you know you can deal with it, you've recovered, um, but, but start off very slow and very easily. And I think that, that heart rate is a good uh, intervention that you can kind of, I guess, utilize to ensure you're not overdoing it too early. So there's six things to focus on with an overtraining recovery protocol. Obviously, there's a lot of you know, there's more depth to each of these that we could really dive into. Each of these could be an individual video, I guess. Um, but nonetheless, very generally and broadly, hopefully that was some useful information. And if you have questions regarding any of these in particular, um, or, or want to seek more information, if you have questions, post them in the comments below. If you want to seek any more information, then just do a, a Google search because I've likely done a video, I think mostly on at least blood tests for endurance improving sleep quality, um, nutrition and supplementation. So at least for those four, uh, so you can just search that in the, in the channel and some videos should, should pop up. So hopefully that was, uh, useful. Um, like I said, leave any comments below, take care guys. Hope everyone's keeping well, uh, keeping healthy into the new year and staying safe out whilst training. So thank you very much for watching and I will see everybody in the next video.